Yo, so finished fasting this, this week. Even though I'm not fasting any longer, I'm still gonna follow the same type of workouts that I've been doing, which are higher volume, lower intensity, and a tremendous variety in exercise. I'm really beginning to enjoy these types of workouts, and I'm gonna continue doing it probably for the next several months. Another part of the reason why I really enjoy these workouts is because I'm not really sore, and I don't feel my body getting very tense like it typically does when I do a, you know, the typical bodybuilding routine or powerlifting routine or even when I do strongman. So just for a change of pace to see what type of response my body receives from this type of training, I will be doing this for quite a bit longer and if you enjoy these, follow along with me. Today we're going to do arms and core. We're going to begin with barbell curls times 10, medicine ball push-ups, chopper sit-ups, all high volume, four sets of those, alternating dumbbell curls, close rate push-ups, you'll see, feet up, rollouts for the core, three sets, cable curls, hands-on switch ball push-ups, renegade rows, three sets, all high volume, 10 to 20 reps, alternating hammer curls, plyo push-up impacts, I'll show you that in a moment, alternating leg reach uh, times 10. Finally, and this is, this is a long workout, I can see there's a ton of volume, I'm really enjoying the variety of movement, not only in my workouts, like the weight training workouts, but the tremendous amount of stretching and dynamic meditation I've been doing lately, all stuff I'll make other videos about. Band push up, uh, push downs, alternating lunge and reach, tricep extensions overhead, lunge and twist. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoy this workout. Talk to you later. If you find that your weight training or strength training or bodybuilding routine is getting stale, recognize that you might just be suffering from pattern overload. And a lot of times the joints begin hurting when you subject yourself to pattern overload. It's as simple as taking the patterns that you're used to doing and integrating them with other means of exciting your nervous system. If you're used to doing barbell curls, switch it up and do dumbbell curls, do alternating curls, do standing curls on one leg. You're gonna, your body's gonna have to activate all those writing and tilting reflexes where you're gonna turn on different muscles. Use cables. This is, this is something that will help you access greater range of motion and also more uh, motor pathways for you to, for your strength <clears throat> endeavors. is improving a tremendous amount also by keeping the intensity a bit lower. I'm not having to resort to using my traps for everything. Part of the reason why my traps are so huge is going to lift a lot of heavy things and, uh, and activate those muscles typically. Now I'm able to keep them relaxed, keep them long, especially after doing a lot of corrective stretching, having some mobility work done on my shoulders. But when I train, I can maintain a nice long neck, good posture. Structural integrity is everything. Sacrifice muscle size and strength for structural integrity if you plan on having a long career in strength training, bodybuilding, weightlifting. <clears throat> when you begin sacrificing your structural integrity, you sacrifice your joint health. You sacrifice your joint health, well, there's a cascading effect of a whole lot of other things that'll limit your potential for becoming a stronger you.
Stronger body, stronger mind. So many people like that concept of uh, mind over matter and, uh, and mind body training. But very few are, are crazy enough, I guess, to see the literal translation into how your body is your mind. Biologically speaking, it's true. There's no delineation between mind and body. If body's affected, mind will reflect it. If mind is disturbed, body will reflect it. So I'm gonna do alternating dumbbell curls. Kind of a lightweight for me, but I'm gonna to attempt to do it off of one leg. Now listen, it isn't because it's going to increase my muscular gains. Know that not everything I do personally is for increasing muscular gains, but to educate the nervous system to be able to stand on a smaller base of support. Again, more intelligent body, more intelligent mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do this off of one leg. Boom, just the extra interesting stimulation. I'm really having to access a lot more core strength through this balance. Standing on one leg is always good medicine for those with ankle, knee, hip, and core imbalances. When I use that term balance, I don't mean being able to stand on one leg per se. That stimulates the balance that needs to be created in the muscular system. All the riding and tilting reflexes, the survival reflexes. My leg and foot are turning on lots of different muscles right now that are usually dormant because I don't stand on one leg very often. These muscles go to sleep when I stand on two legs. It's just a little bit of extra fun, a little bit of extra stimulation, a little bit of extra challenge for a little bit of extra growth. Good, I'm gonna hit some rollouts. This is an interesting piece of equipment that they should have put the name on, but uh, someone sent me this in the mail. <clears throat> I'm gonna go from knees. When I do this particular exercise, my focus is on tucking my butt under, because that's where my weakness is. So you'll notice I sort of round my back like the cat pose in, uh, in yoga, but I do this. But I don't want to lose the integrity of my shoulders, so what I'll also try to force myself to do is drop my shoulders down and lengthen my head, lengthen my neck while I tuck my butt under. It seems almost like complete opposites, which it really is, but very difficult to do, especially if, if you have tight lats. You have to understand how your lats also contribute to your lumbar extension. Lats aren't just a back muscle. Lats are also a shoulder muscle and a hip muscle. <clears throat> because they influence your shoulders and hips. <clears throat> Once again, we like to isolate ourselves into compartments. Compartmentalized muscles, compartmentalized organs, compart compartmentalized systems. But we're one thing. Your body is your mind. Your body is also your digestive system. What part of your body doesn't contribute to your digestive system? Which part of your body doesn't contri contribute to your cardiovascular system? Which part of your body isn't breathing? Which part of your body isn't contributing to your circulatory system, right? Where are there lymph and blood and fluids being pumped and moved throughout your body? Where, where does your circular, circulatory system end? Where does your digestive system end? Where does your nervous system end, right? Where does your muscular system begin and end? Even your heart has a particular type of muscle in it. Even your, the smooth organs of your digestive system have a particular type of muscle in it. The interesting thing about the muscles in your digestive system and your cardiovascular system is that they could also be called your visceral system and they have a special type of intelligence where unlike these muscles we reflex, tell me when you flex your colon so that it can express water from the food you eat and eliminate waste. Are you doing this? No, 
but it's an intelligent type of muscle, smooth muscle. Getting the other leg now, definitely a bit more challenging because uh, I've broken this foot before. If you ever notice when I'm doing single leg squats or uh, squats, a lot of times I've got an obvious left to right imbalance because I've broken this foot. I've damaged this foot and knee many times. Acute from sports and such. I gotta focus on keeping a slight bend in this knee. Because what I'll have a tendency to do is to rest on my bones. And that causes me to overuse the glute medius on this side. Glute medius becomes overstimulated and strong. Glute maximus stops working. And you need glute maximus for powerful expression of the lower body, like jumping and sprinting. So you never want to rest on your, on your hips. You always want to be able to maintain nice pelvic stability and uprightness in your core. Otherwise, you'll have a tendency, and a lot of people do, to rest on their glute medius. Glute medius is up here. Glute maximus is down here. You overstimulate and rest on that muscle up there, it becomes tonic in relationship to your glute maximus. And then you can't sprint, you can't jump. You can't be a big, bad, strong, badass. Paying close attention even to the spacing of my fingers. Give a quick shout out to the company that sent me these. A gentleman in Long Island created these, he calls them Sparta Bells. I guess kind of a play on kettlebells, but he uh, threw Sparta in there. Anyway, today I'm gonna use them for renegade rows. This is definitely a core intensive workout. And uh, you gotta understand something that your core are your stabilizers. <laughs> your core is a stabilizer for your entire neuromuscular system. And as it fatigues, your ability to do single joint exercises, and especially high intensity exercises, goes down. You can't recruit your center, your core. Your core goes far beyond just your six pack abs. It has everything to do with structural integrity from your, the tip of your skull to your perineum. Sung is an Indian way to, Indian term used to describe what the Rastas call reasoning sessions. Yeah. And what the Native Americans would call a powwow. Uh -huh. You know, some sort. And it's a getting together, letting go of the ego, bringing the spirit to join us. Yeah. In really mastermind. Yeah. Our, well, our all the different way. emotions and stuff like that. You know what I mean? They come to grips with every single one. Yeah. All right, what's coming up in you? What's going on there? Let's deal with it. Yeah. Let's pull it out. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I think a big part of it is we're, we're, we're ashamed in our society 
of our emotion. We're ashamed of our sexual energy. We're ashamed of our vitality. Mm -hmm. We're ashamed of our bodies. And when you're given an opportunity to explore your body through what is usually very awkward, dance, movement, mm -hmm. yelling, sounds, expressing yourself, you get, it's, a, it's a form of liberation. It liberates the mind because the body is free to do what it wants to do the whole time. The whole time. You can look at somebody's face and you can tell, boy, oh, your jaw is so tight. You're just grounding your grinding your teeth. Nigga, you want to bite something, don't you? Mm -hmm. You want to scare. But you liberate, you liberate that in someone's muscular system. You liberate their jaw. You liberate their mind, their consciousness from the energy that held the jaw tight. Mm -hmm. Now you're free from that anger because you were able to get it out. That's true freedom. But the problem again is that it's a breaking down of the ego where the type of training we're used to is a building up of the ego. Yeah, yeah. Both, why not both? Yeah. I want both. I want to teach both. That's my mission, to teach both. The strongest version of yourself isn't just a bigger, stronger, more powerful, sexy looking body. It's a well-adapted nervous system, free from chronic tension due to psychological baggage and bullshit. It allows your muscular system not only to look good, but to perform good. This is why they call me pseudoscientist. This is why they call me bro scientist. Because this is not stuff that can be measured because nothing as subjective as the human soul can be measured that way. There are no tools. Now you may be able to measure different neurotransmitters and hormones, but you can't measure a man's character, his soul, the spiritual expression within his consciousness and body. That can't be measured. So it sounds like bro science. Maybe it is. Call it what you want, but try it. Because once you become free, you never want to be a fucking slave again.